Welcome to Parashat B'Shalach. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, welcome to my house, <laughs> which is where most of the work seems to be happening nowadays. Also happens to be the venue for school, for eating, and for various attempts at parenting. Uh, let's look at Parashat B'Shalach, and welcome to my new headphones as well. Um, Parashat B'Shalach contains a fascinating pasuk, um, which says as follows, Vayaminu Bashem of Moshe Avdo. They're just about to cross the sea, or actually they've crossed the sea, just about to sing Shiraz Hayam, the song of the sea. Um, and, and suddenly the declaration is Vayaminu Bashem, they believed in Hashem, of Moshe Avdo and Moshe, his servant. And now, uh, uh, the question, I guess, is: you know, what, Only now they believe in Hashem. Only now they believe in Moshe as the servant of Hashem. They've seen the ten plagues. They've seen the miracles at the sea. What does it mean now they believe in Moshe Avdo and they believe in Hashem? It explains the Aruchayim the following: Sometimes, until you see something in the flesh, or maybe we can add, until you've been through the process of what that. Uh, it develops as and, and seeing its purpose. Sometimes when things are abstract, then emuna is abstract. Sometimes when things are not grounded, when things are not concretized, then belief or knowledge is abstract. Let's put it into other terms, perhaps that are less abstract. Um, the stipler uh, commentary, the stipler gone, as he's called, um, identifies two different levels of emuna. There's an emuna that's called emuna sichlis and an emuna that's called emuna chushis. What does that mean? Well, there are two ways to know things. Uh, you can either know something intellectually or you can know something in uh, something that's deep and, and really part of you. Example, uh, many years ago, uh, I was traveling back from uh, giving a shearing yeshiva in Israel um, and there was a taxi driver uh, who was taking me home and, and he was he was uh, smoking, I don't know, more than a nuclear chimney, we would say. Um, and he turns around to me, he says, Daniel, he says, you shouldn't smoke, it's dangerous. I'm thinking to myself, well, firstly, I don't smoke. <laughs> and secondly, I had not know my first name. But thirdly, you know, but you smoke. If you believe it's dangerous, what are you doing? So, of course, there's, a, you know, there's time for a discussion about addictions. But bottom line is he knew intellectually that it was a problem to smoke, but he hadn't internalized it. In other words, sometimes in life, and teenagers are very uh, great at this skill, um, is sometimes we know things intellectually. You know, you know where you want to be in life, you know where you want to go, but emotionally or in, in, in an internalized fashion, we aren't there yet. We're not there yet. Emuna sikhlis is intellectual knowledge, and emuna chushis is when it's deep, ingrained, and part of you. Chush means sense. So it's from the, it's sensual emuna. Uh, the Jewish people at the time, of course, they had emuna. Yeah, of course, they knew they believed in Moshe, believed in Hashem. They'd seen the ten plagues, but the question was: Was it deep, ingrained, purposeful emunah that they knew they're on a journey? Not until they they uh, went through the sea, not until they saw their demons, the Egyptians gone, not until they saw that Hashem deals with everyone differently on a different level. Different Egyptians drowned at different points according to their wickedness. Vayaminu Bashem, Moshe after had this deep, ingrained emunah. The lesson for us people is very clear. Sometimes we talk about Amunah, belief in God. Yeah, of course I believe. I believe, you know, etc. Cardiac Judaism, I believe, you know. Um, but there has to be a level of Amunah Chushis, which is making that part of your life, making part of what you do, expressing it in every action, making it not just something I received and inherited from my parents, my grandparents, etc. You know, this baton I pass on, but actually adding to it, you know, deepening your Amunah. Thinking ways that you can increase that emona and flex that muscle as we build it. Just to finish with a story of a Mark Twain, Samuel Clements. Um, he tells the story in one of his books. It eludes me for the moment um, of the time he was a boatsman. Um, and he was uh, training to be a boatsman or whatever. And part of this training exercise is that he had to remember the various parts of the river. So as the boat meandered down the canal, um, he would uh, have to remember the depths. Um, and finally, he was given control of the boat at the barge. Uh, and uh, you know, as he's, as he's uh, kind of sailing the boat or leading the boat, um, there's someone from behind calling out the various depths. Uh, and, and suddenly something quite unexpected happens. He's calling, you know, that the depths are going down and down and down, right? Mark one, mark two, mark three, whatever it is, right? And then eventually he, the, the guy calling back says, stop the boat, you know, you're about to hit something. Right? And at that point, of course, Mark Twain, Sam Clement stops the boat immediately. Right? And the guy turns around and says, no, 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 he says, uh, I, I, I was, it was just telling lies. I wanted to see how confident you were. You know, sometimes Emuna 
needs to be like that. You know, it has to be ingrained, it has to be total, it has to be absolute, and it has to be our guiding light in life in as much as even though others may say otherwise, even though you might be faced with facts and figures and this and that, etc. But but we have our amuna. And we have our amuna, which is real fact, which has withstood the test of time, which is deeper than anything that people can flippantly kind of throw out there. Um, and it's our real anchor. And please, God, it should, uh, you know, continue to the future. As the Gemara says, that Jewish people are nigal, are redeemed with amuna. Have a great Shabbos.